Welcome to the MOOC course on electrochemical technology for pollution monitoring. This is a beautiful uh, topic for discussion, especially for, with respect to modern technology that is available for uh, monitoring the pollution, because nowadays the world is nothing but sensors. So, sensors are all work on electrochemical technology. 99 percent. Okay. So, this course I have designed especially for you, because it has got ramifications in chemistry, it uh, in uh, engineering, in pollution control and in several other fields, where we need sensors and the electrochemical technology. Without electrochemical technology, I do not think uh, world will run at all. 99 percent of the metal objects what to use, they have all undergone electrochemical treatment, either plating, polishing and metallurgical operations, something like that. And uh, the surface technology is essentially an offshoot of electrochemical technology. Earlier, electrochemistry was one of the important uh, uh, subject for all electrochemical uh, for all chemists and nowadays the con electrochemical content has become very less and uh, many people cannot connect the electrochemical principles with day to day life as well as in the modern technology. I can only say that modern technology is not there without electrochemical technology. So, you are all welcome to a new course on electrochemical technology for pollution monitoring. Earlier, I have given couple of courses, one on spectrophotometry, one on inductive coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy, one on uh, atomic absorption spectroscopy and then uh, one on uh, infrared spectroscopy. That course has run uh, a repeat course you can refer to them for the basic understanding of the atomic structure and other things. But I also understand that for this course many of you might be might not be chemists, you may be an engineer, you may be some practicing scientist, you may be uh, just requiring a little bit of knowledge for something else etcetera. So, what I am do going to do is I am going to talk to you about the basic principles of the chemistry, fundamental principle, a little bit of introduction in case you have forgotten. For example, lot of engineers would have forgotten what is a chemical, what is the structure, atomic structure, what is a periodic table and why, how do we correlate chemistry with uh, electrochemical technology etcetera. So, there is, there is a course on at, uh, atomic structure, there is a module and then there is a course on uh, a little bit uh, of uh, periodic table and then fundamental principles of chemistry. That is they are all related to the electrochemical technology, because we are going to talk quite a lot about the chemical solutions, their representation, electrical properties, chemical properties etcetera. So, uh, I would uh, like to welcome you all to a new exciting course. Initially, I thought I would uh, do this program only for about uh, 8 hours or uh, uh, something like that, but now I think it has, the scope has broadened as and when I went on designing this course. So, welcome to an exciting new course and then uh, I would uh, uh, suggest the some of the courses or some of the material what I have reading material etcetera, they are all in the website and you can go through them. And let us start from the 
beginning that is uh, um, an introduction to chemistry. So, look at the slide. Um, my name is Dr. Mudakavi. Uh, I am from the Department of Chemical Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Actually, I retired from there and currently I am uh, I have a chemical laboratory where I practice my chemistry and uh, we never retire you know. <laughs> so, there is always this thing. So, you are most welcome to contact me anytime uh, up to uh, 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night, but slightly late in the morning but around 7 a.m. or something after 7 a.m. and uh, I will be available. You may note down my address and phone number and other things etcetera from the website from the NPTEL office and uh, we will also have some sort of interactive session uh, once we get on with the course, once you register etcetera all those things are automatically done. So, let us begin with the introduction part. So, I would like you to understand what I am going to teach. This is something regarding the course itself. So, here are the here is the plan of teaching what I am going to teach you. So, first thing is uh, introduction to um, int to this electrochemical technology as well as sensor technology and uh, this course of course and then comes atomic structure. I, uh, if you remember the title, I had given that it is uh, electrochemical technology for pollution control. So, I am going to talk a little bit about the pollution control also. How electrochemical technology can be useful for the uh, monitoring of pollution and pollutants basically. There is a lot of instrumentation and other things involved in this in addition to chemistry. We will go through all that and uh, I wish you a very beautiful sessions of learning. So, first uh, part module 1 is introduction and then comes atomic structure. This is a sort of repetitive course for those of you who have taken my course earlier, but for others it will be a welcome introduction to the course. Then we are going to talk about the properties of solutions that is uh, different uh, ideal gas laws and Henry's laws, Raoult's law etcetera. And then we have we will discuss about the electrochemical basis of titrations that is also another part. Then we are going to talk about voltammetry, polarography and other electrochemical uh, techniques. Then we are going to talk about electro basically it will be something like electro analytical techniques that is module number 5. We will be talking about electro analytical techniques which will enable us to determine the pollutants and chemicals etcetera metal ions in solution at parts per billion and parts per trillion level. Nothing uh, uh, you know <laughs> we are not going to talk much about uh, wet chemistry or bucket chemistry we have all moved away from that kind of learning since about uh, last uh, 20, 25 years. So, we are going to talk only about microliters and milliliters etcetera. It will be exciting uh, to discuss those things with you and uh, I am going to talk about electrochemical sensors. So, what are the sensors made of, how do they work and uh, uh, in what context they are useful to us etcetera. And then I am going to talk about battery technology. Today's world is nothing but batteries you know mobile right from our mobiles to watches and so many devices will not run without battery. Battery can be stored battery energy or it may be only a, a, a energy something like solar energy you know solar batteries are available in the market, we will discuss and learn about them. And then we are going to talk about the process waste handling that is also very important concept in pollution control. So, the modules are not important, 
but different types of modules what we are going to talk is are important. The numbers may change a little bit here and there depending upon our convenience and available time. Okay. So, we are going to talk about the introduction first. So, this is here goes the introduction. What I want to tell you is application of science and technology for improving quality of life on earth is an ever going evolutionary process. Since last 50 years, the pace of adoption of science and technology has been increasing at breakneck speed in recent years. You may be surprised to know that uh, there may be the uh, I can give you a small example of how fast things are changing. Okay. Here goes one example man wanted to run faster move faster. So, initially the only thing a man knew was to run you know that is several million years before when man himself was uh, was uh, new to this earth the first uh, homo sapiens and other they knew only how to run to save themselves or to catch some food prey right. So, about 2000 years before man tamed horses. So, with the horse a man was able to travel about uh, 20, 30 kilometer speed uh, per hour and then came the industrial revolution along with that came bicycles and trains and uh, motor cars all those things increase the traveling speed of a man to about uh, 80 to 100 kilometers per uh, hour maybe 200. Nowadays trains run at 300, 400 kilometers per hour that is also there, but that is the average speed. But then man wanted to have more speed. Then what happened? We all in the world invented aeroplanes 600 kilometers speed achievable yes. So, again the time gap between an industrial revolution 1700 within 200 years man has been able to fly catch up to 600 then came rockets. Now, we are able to break the sound uh, speed of sound and our uh, rockets and other things travel several thousand kilometers per second. So, the same thing happens in our day to day scientific life also. The computers when we were students used to be huge and uh, which we would do primitive calculations. I remember in IIT Mumbai there were computers who uh, which were occupying about half a room size and nobody would be allowed to go there. Nowadays we have mobile uh, mobiles which can do the job of a computer correct. So, the same mobile what can do uh, what it can do as a computer can also take photographs, it can also take uh, send messages, collect messages, new uh, receive news, entertainment has thousands of applications. If you just go to applications of mobiles you will be surprised to know these. What I am trying to tell you is the pace of the speed, the pace of the innovations is fantastic that is number one. Number two things have become miniaturized. Okay. So, adoption of science and technology for human comforts you know this is also sort of uh, uh, technology. So, we employ science and technology for human comforts, we use uh, food, clothing, housing, medicine, travel, entertainment, agriculture, everything, everything is a very, very, very visible process. However, the same advances have also given us atom bombs, hydrogen bombs, neutron bombs 
and several things of destruction which can wipe out the uh, earth within minutes. So, I am trying to convey to you that science and technology is playing a huge part in our day to day life. Housing, medicine, we solve the problems and then we have atom bombs, we can destroy everything within no time. So, the same advances that can be used for the welfare of the society can also be used for the destroying for destroying the society. So, we can we can have milk revolution, we can have green revolution, we can have several other kinds of revolutions, miniaturization revolution, electronic revolution, metal revolution, chemical revolution, thousands of things, but at the same time science can also be used for controlling diseases, pollution control, remedial actions for people, there are so many other things it can be used. So, what uh, is important is fundamental sciences uh, such as electrochemical technology, they have made rapid strides in the last century and currently we are able to understand the electrochemical nature of the elements just like inter uh, internet of things we are able to understand the electrochemical nature of the elements ions, compounds, metals, neurons in our body, in our brains, they all, everything is electrochemical uh, action. Even the simple action of moving my hand, I need an electrical impulse from the brain and uh, it is just an uh, basically believe me it is just an electrochemical reaction. So, the electrochemical technology has advanced so much nowadays that the electronic and nuclear structure is very important for us to learn. Then only we can do th many things. For example, in the miniaturization revolution, you all of you must have heard of nanocarbons, uh, fullerenes. They reduce the size of these instruments to so small level, molecular level, but again it is an electrochemical technology basically. So, electrochemical technology is a science which is an offshoot of the structural changes occurring during electronic transitions. Over the years, electrochemical technology has grown into a very powerful tool for the identification and quantification of the chemical compounds. The same can also be used to follow the progress of chemical reactions. So, you can imagine that electrochemistry is uh, required in every day to day life. Now, how do I connect electrochemical technology to pollution control? Very simple, environmental pollution first of all we define it as the temporary or permanent changes occurring in our surroundings. Our surroundings include air, water, land, troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, thermosphere, several other uh, uh, earth uh, connected uh, um, spaces and that affect the normally environmental pollution is what affects the quality of our human life. It may be temporary or permanent that is different. Okay. So, since last 60 years environmental pollution has been posing a major threat to our survival of the living organisms including man, plants, animals, bacterial populations, insects, everything. So, uh, environmental uh, has touched every person's life. So, what do we have here now? Can we marry both? environment and electrochemical technology? Answer is yes and technically environmental pollution is thought to originate from dust, chemicals, their interactions with microbial spe microbiological species such as bacteria, virus, algae, fungi, uh, animals etcetera and 
a localized pollution is one, it is already written on the slide for you, I am uh, just expanding a little bit for your benefit. So, a localized uh, pollution is caused by variation of biochemical oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand in our water bodies by the chemicals we let out into the uh, our water bodies. We take bath, we put soap in the solution that will create BOD, COD. We use uh, cosmetics that goes into the water uh, creating BOD, COD. We pre create uh, chemicals, chemicals are let out uh, onto the soil, they leach, the leached chemicals will enter into water bodies causing BOD, COD. So, we will talk about BOD and COD biochemical oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand for, uh, later in greater detail, but for the time being I want to tell you that it is a measure of the pollution that is uh, uh, that is occurring in water bodies. Okay. And then we have pollution localized pollution from atmospheric emissions, very simple to understand now. Basically what happens? If you have a factory around and it has a stack, it keeps on emitting smoke, our vehicles uh, emit smoke, diesel vehicles exhaust, diesel exhaust all those things. So, localized emissions such as stacks and uh, automobile exhaust cause atmospheric emissions and decomposing materials cause atmospheric emissions. Our cows give out methane and other uh, chemicals that is also localized uh, pollution and then decomposition of organic matter in air, water, land etcetera that also causes localized pollution and irretrievable loss of metal ions and their distribution in the environment. That is another biggest problem. I will talk to you about it sometime later whenever the time permits, but for the time being let us assume that whenever I want a metal, uh, metal to be made because metals are forever. We want gold, we want silver, we want copper, we want cobalt, we want lithium, we want many other elements. How do I get them? They are all available only in the form of ores in the bowels of the earth. We take them out, make the metal so long as the conversion of ore into metal is economically beneficial. The moment uh, its concentration goes down, we throw them out, we do not use them anymore, we just let them lie on the land and the metal ions will get corroded, will get leached and along with rain it will move into the water uh, bodies, it will move onto the soil, it will move into the, our food chain, several other things. So, basically what I am trying to convey in this slide is that the localized pollution is always there all around us, touching everyone's life. Okay. While it is true that the pollution causes uh, a variety of maladies, it is also possible at least to remedy the situation by physically and chemically removing the offending chemical. You remove the chemicals, offending chemicals can be removed, then we have no pollution. So, the procedure for environmental pollution control, what does uh, what do we do? It is a very simple procedure. First is identify, identify and determine the pollutants and the extent of pollution, how much of uh, pollution is there. If you are determining smoke, fog, etcetera, find out what is the visibility that will tell you what is the extent of pollution, right. And then once you identify, suppose the one factory is letting out sulphur dioxide or uh, nitrogen, nitric oxide, you identify what is the compound and how much is coming out. Then you can find out what, how to get rid of the pollutants. Okay. So, once the identification and determination is accomplished, then comes the next uh, step that is engineering evaluation. So, that is known as technical in intervention, it is this is man made. 
So, we all use our technology to reduce, remove the or reduce or remove the pollutants may be dilution. There are several methods of uh, reducing the pollution and after we do that job, one more job remains to be done that is post intervention evaluation. After we apply a particular uh, technique to reduce the pollution, how much effective it is that we are to, supposed to understand now. So, that is post inter intervention evaluation. Fortunately, it is possible to employ atomic and molecular spectroscopy to qualitatively and quantitatively uh, determine the pollutants in any given matrix. So, what is a matrix? Matrix is a body of a material along with the pollutant in which we want to determine. So, it may be water, it may be soil, it may be air packet all are called matrix. So, the sample in which a material is to be analyzed is called as matrix. Okay. So, the advantages of electrochemical techniques why do we employ electrochemical techniques at all? Because there are advantages associated with that right. Otherwise, who would uh, suffer? If there are advantages, we use the use it to our advantage. What are the advantages of electrochemical technology? It is simple, it is fast, it is reliable and it is cost effective. It offers us a cost effective solution for pollution monitoring. Okay. So, and uh, the discussion now moves on to environmental analytical science. So, what does it do? Environmental analytical science aims at developing methodologies, instrumentation, mathematical correlations and models that predict the environmental fate of new and existing chemical compounds. So, it presents a concise form the most important property is related to the chemical reactions and the amount of substance is present, how it can be handled. So, a thorough knowledge of environmental analytical chemistry greatly helps to measure the extent of environmental pollution monitoring, which in turn can be adopted for pollution control. Remember always, uh, how I attack a problem is first is analyze, determine, quantify and then technical intervention followed by post technical inter evaluation. So, among all these things what is required basically is an electro environmental analytical science. We need analytical science. What is analytical science? An analytical science is that science which teaches us how to estimate, how to determine qualitatively whether it is there or not pass or fail test or it may it is how much of it is there. So, quantitative analysis. So, an analytical chemistry is that branch of chemistry which is very important in day to day life. Whether you take medicine, whether you take food, whether you take uh, any other activity analytical chemistry is part and parcel of the whole life, everybody's life. So, electrochemical technology is part of analytical science. Okay. So, what do we, uh, when we talk of electrochemical technology, we study apart from spectroscopy electrochemical technology. Earlier, there used to be different sections of electrochemical science analytical science etcetera, spectroscopic science, now it chromatographic science etcetera. Nowadays, the difference between the disciplines of instrumentation, electronics, analytical science and uh, electrochemical science everything has become merged and an electrochemical society, electrochemical not society, electrochemical technology has become one 
a smooth mosaic of several disciplines involving analytical chemistry, electronics and then uh, computerization, data handling and many other things that are rolled into one. So, the distinction between different sciences of analytical science have become merged and electrochemistry is no exception. So, we are going to learn lot of things about the instruments when we learn we will learn the instrumental parts also how they function, what are the electronic requirements etcetera, electrical and electronic requirements etcetera. So, electroanalytical techniques have assumed great importance in pollution monitoring of chemical species since last 20 years that is all. The earlier very few people used to study electrochemistry as such for day to day sol uh, problem solving, nowadays it is there everywhere. So, electrochemical sensors including ion sensitive electrodes are employed to detection pollution levels in all public spa spaces. They also find uh, application in uh, portable instruments. Suppose you want to know how much of fluoride is there in the local pond you cannot take everything to the laboratory, you just carry an electrochemical sensor in your pocket, take it out, go to the spot, measure the pollution fluoride level, come back. So, miniaturization, pocket transition, pocket uh, instruments, they are all there to handle electrochemical analysis and the accuracy is as much as you wish ion selective electrodes is one of the techniques that can be used to determine many, many, many parameters which are required in our day to day life. They are uh, ion selective electrodes are employed to detect and to detect the pollution levels in all public spaces. They also find extensive applications in medical diagnosis, industrial process monitoring, communication industry etcetera. Okay. So, now look at the next slide, there are other uh, things I wanted you to understand that is fuel cells, how uh, I am trying to explain to you how electrochemical technology is touching our day to day life nowadays. So, fuel cells and battery technology again are the energy sources of the future. So, industrial waste generated from electrochemical processes are one of the most hazardous wastes and we need specialized knowledge of how to handle such waste. They need to be effectively managed and then electrochemical technology is again based on the electrochemical properties of the chemicals. We have to understand there is heterocyclic chemistry and analytical chemistry are again marrying each other for rapidly changing subjects whose almost frenetic activities are affected by the countless research papers appearing in established and new journals. So, many papers and research papers are appearing and by the proliferation then there are monographs, books, reviews and several other uh, technical uh, material is available uh, in our uh, Google and other uh, databases. So, the interdependence of these two branches of chemistry has resulted in the resurgence of electrochemical technology due to the enhanced selectivity and sensitivity of the electrochemical methods by choosing appropriate heterocyclics to react with the target species. What are heterocyclics? They are organic compounds basically and they react with specific metal ions or uh, other uh, reacting species to generate the electrochemical systems these fuel cells and other things what we have talked about earlier, they are all involving these uh, heterocyclics, 
and then methane organic compounds and inorganic compounds targets, tinsiers etcetera. And consequently majority of this research has been transferred in the last two decades to the field of environmental analytical chemistry. So, without pollution control there is no analytical chemistry and without analytical chemistry there is no pollution control. So, this course is designed not only for the chemistry people, but also for engineers and it is also designed for people with other backgrounds such as botany, zoology and other uh, uh, material research etcetera. But there are things to learn basic things which we are going to study now. So, here we have uh, the course design uh, basically regarding electroanalytical chemistry what we have here. So, we have potentiometry, conductometry, voltammetry, we are going to talk about electrochemical sensors, battery technology and process waste handling for pollution control. So, there is another technique in regarding the pollution control that is known as zero liquid discharge ZLD. So, we do not want any of the industries letting out any water used or unused. Unused if they want to let out they can as well not take it, but if somebody is using water for their process no water should come out of the industry which is untreated. So, zero liquid discharge is a concept that has been popularized since last uh, 10 years in India and abroad and we are going to talk about it in our course. And uh, our cur current understanding of the electrochemical technology is based on modern concepts of atomic structure, electronic exchange reactions, chemical kinetics, thermodynamics and then electrical properties etcetera including the recent developments on uh, elect instrumentation, electronics and then electrical engineering all those things included. Therefore, it is imperative that we study some fundamental aspects of atomic structure and other basic chemical principles because when I am going to explain to you about the voltammetry I do not want you to understand. Um, you know get bogged down trying to understand the fundamental basic terms what we are going to discuss. So, this course is designed to give you an insight into these aspects in the next few interactions. Okay. So, this is where I stop for uh, today and uh, in the next class we will start studying about the atomic and molecular structure. This will be a sort of short introduction uh, regarding the structure of the atom. So, thank you very much. We will discuss again after uh, in the next class.